Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. You know, there have been times when I had a potentiometer in my design and, well, I wanted to see the effects of it being adjusted. So, you'll look through all of the available components in LT Spice and, well, there's no potentiometer anywhere. So, what do I do? Well, I put in two resistors, one for above the wiper and one for below the wiper. And then in the past, I would manually set values for each, then simulate, then change the values, then re-simulate. But you know, there is an easier and automatic way to do this so that you can see all of the effects of all of the values in one simulation. And this is what I'm going to show you today in this quick video. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's go to LT Spice and see how this is done. So here's my simple test circuit. R1 is the upper half of the potentiometer. R2 is the lower half of the potentiometer. Now, while I could have defined a simple DC voltage source for this demonstration, I thought, well, that is just totally boring. So I defined a pulse source that goes from 0 to 10 volts after waiting 100 microseconds. I still thought this was boring. So I added a small capacitor on the output so we can see that riveting charging action. Now, how do we make LT Spice do the whole variable resistor action thing? Well, the first step is to give the resistors funky values. What we are doing is assigning them values that are called Spice parameters. These are like variables in programming or algebra. I will assign R1 the value left curly bracket, R in, right curly bracket, and R2, the value left curly bracket, R out, right curly bracket. Now, we need these values to change somehow. Well, we start this process by defining a dot step spice directive. We can either hit the S key or we can click on the dot OP icon on the toolbar. The spice directive dialog box opens. Type dot step in the text field and press enter. Now you're dragging the dot step text around the screen Drop it in place on your schematic by clicking on the location where you want it to live. Me, I want it to live near the component I'm going to be stepping, R1. Now, right click on the dot step text in the schematic. The step statement editor dialog box opens. In the name of parameter to sweep field, I'm going to enter the parameter name for R1, which is Rn. Next, I'm going to leave the nature of sweep as linear. With this, I define the start and end values and an increment value for the resistor. Now, they don't like the resistor values to be zero, so my start value is going to be a very, very small value, say, one milliohm. I am using a 10K ohm potentiometer so my stop value is going to be 10K. Now for the increment. I will choose an increment of 1K. This means that R1 will have the values of 1 milliohm, 1K, 2K, 3K, and so on, up to 10K. We are all done. Click on the OK button. Now, let's turn our attention to R2 the output resistor. If we were to use another dot step directive, 
Then for R1 equals, say, 5K, R2 would be simulated as 1 milliohm, 1K, 2K, and so on, up to 10K. But this isn't how a potentiometer works. If we have a 10K ohm potentiometer and R1 is 5K, then the only value for R2 is going to be 5K. So how do we get LT spice to plot one value for R2 for every stepped value of R1? We do this by using the dot param directive, a parameter directive. Either type the S key or click on the dot op icon on, in the toolbar. In the spice directive dialog box, type dot P -A -R -A -M dot param space r out equals one zero point zero 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 one k minus r n. Okay, so what's this? funky 10.0000001k. Well, like with the dot step directive, LT Spice does not like R2 to have a value of zero. When Rn equals 10k, the result of this equation is one milliohm, a non-zero value. Once done, click on the OK button. Like before, we are now dragging our dot param directive around the screen. Drop it in place somewhere. I like to put it near the component it applies to in this case, which would be R2. Done. Now we're ready to simulate. So now we start the simulation either by typing Control S or by clicking on the running guy icon on the toolbar. We wait for LT Spice to complete its work. I'm interested in the voltage at V out, so I take my probe icon and click on that net. The results appear in the plot above. We can now see the results of each of the values of our potentiometer. I click on the V out signal in the plot to turn on the cursor. We can navigate from one value to the next using the up and down arrows. If I want to know the component value associated with a particular trace on the plot, I position the cursor on that trace using the up and down arrows, and then right click on it. An information box pops up to tell you the value of R1 for that particular trace. It's just all as simple as that. So there you go. Now you can simulate the action of a potentiometer as simple as can be. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.